what you're doing guys. Welcome to what I hope is the first episode of Racer Diaries, which is something I've been meaning to do. Um, but there are more than a few spanners in the works. Spanner in the works. Spanners in the works. Problems. There's issues. There's issues. Um, start off with this beautiful piece of kit in the middle. This is my Bossy GRXS Type R. And yes, the motor's hanging out. I'll get onto that. Absolutely stunning car. It's a complete work of art. Actually, no, it's better than a work of art since modern uh, modern art is bollocks. So, um, yeah, I bought this several years ago because, as you know, if you're a regular or long time viewer of my channel, I used to race this one, my Lossy Triple XS, which is my all time favourite RC car. I used to race this one in competition, and uh, much success with that. And then, a few years ago, we ran a sort of amateur club amongst friends and things. Matthew was involved and stuff, and I ran it there and won all five years in a row. Uh, now, this. GRXS Type R I bought because I wanted to get back into competition racing. I had a, a, a club in mind, a club in Dundee, we raced touring cars and I thought right I'm going to get stuck in and I bought this used but very little, I think it done one or two practice sessions and that's it. And I had all the equipment with it, it was ready to go apart from I needed to paint a body shell. The reason I didn't do it is because I was waiting on Matthew who bought a TC5 at the same time, an associated TC5. Um, but never got around to it. His didn't have any equipment and it's quite a lot of money to set out buying a, a racing spec brushless system and a you know, 2.4 giga radio system, quality hard case lipos and all the rest of it. And there's a lot of money out late and he hasn't got around to it. So I decided this time, you know what, he can come along and just help me out in you know, the pits and things and, and, uh, and I'll compete until he's ready. So that was the plan. But there are more than a few issues. And let me just draw your attention to the first issue. If I plug this light bulb in. Now this is why the uh, motor is hanging out of the car. I've removed it. Power this all up. And I'll take this in front of the camera so you can hear it right. Listen to this. Now, you might not be picking that up, but that is rough as hell. Rough as hell. Also, watch uh, watch my trigger finger as you listen to the motor. I shall see if I can do it from this side, so you can see the movement of the trigger. See that? What is going on there? Now, I plugged the Tekken RS speed controller into the uh, hot wire system on the computer to get it configured, and it is configured correctly. I have a theory, and it's probably the correct one. My old house, where I used to live, it was very damp. Um, the, the screws on this car have, have completely rusted up. In fact, the screws on this one rusted up as well, but I've actually treated them all with Q-Rust, so they're fine now. I've never done it with this one yet. So the, um, this was sounding even worse yesterday, so I took it apart and rebuilt it. Excuse me. And there's a lot of white corrosion inside the motor, um, and including the board where you plug the sensor into for the motor, for the signal going from the speed controller to the motor, the sensor board is corroded as well. Um, and it, obviously the bearings are gone, which is why it sounds so rough. So I'm hoping there's no damage to the Tekken RS. I'm really hoping that. But this motor is definitely on its last legs. Um, and I am hoping all this funny, you know, half throttle gives you full throttle issues on this. It's purely the motor, not the speed controller. So, I've ordered a different motor. Problem number one. Problem number two is because of this uh, damp in, in the house, I've got a funny feeling the bearings on this car are knackered. I had to replace the bearings on this one. I already did it. So, bearings. I need a bearing kit. So, I've ordered a bearing kit. Uh, then I was going to order a screw kit. They can get a stainless steel screw kit to replace all these rusty screws, but they wanted £65 delivery from America. For a screw kit, that's just extortionate. So no, what I'll do is I'll just take the screws off and treat them with q rust like I did with this one. So this car isn't viable yet. Not until it needs a, not until I get a rebuild. I'm going to rebuild the diffs as well. They don't feel as smooth as they used to. Again, probably because the damp's got in. This car is... I want it to be absolutely perfect before I drive it because... 
not only have I waited years and years and years to drive this car now, also it's the last ever touring car. It's the ultimate evolution from what this came from. And this is my all-time favourite touring car. So I have very high expectations of this car and I want it to be perfect before I use it. So, um, yeah, that's an issue. Another issue was, uh, see these very lovely and expensive Intel, intellect, intellect, uh, hard case lipos, lovely things. Uh, these two of them, one that's in the car, this one here, and the one that's in the car, came with this car when I bought it. Like I say, I bought it second hand. Um, this is knackered. These are hundred pound lipos, I think. Knackered because the the Tikan RS was set up wrong and it was on one cell mode, not two cell mode, so it didn't save one of the two cells in this particular battery pack from dropping below the voltage threshold. You're not supposed to leave any or let any of the two cells drop below three volts. Usually the cutoff is 3.2 or 3.5 volts. One of them was very happily on 3.7. The other one was down at 1.1 volts. This is knackered, which is really frustrating. But anyway, that's that's how it is. So this car is not ready yet. It is not ready yet. So, choice number one, not good enough. Choice number two. Well, obviously the Triple XS is my next obvious choice. Um, I've raced it before, it's fantastic. It's currently set up for wood, and you can tell by the spiky tires. It's also got very soft suspension and everything. Um, but I can set it up for carpet. I used to race on carpet and wood, so I can do that. That's not an issue. Um, but it is brushed and running on nickel metal hydride, as you can see. Um, I did say, I, I did contact the club, and uh, they said, yeah, you can bring it down, run it brushed, just to, just to see, just to practice, just to see, see what it's like. And uh, you know, get an introduction to an introduction to the club. You know, rather than taking it super serious from day one, not that I'm going to take it super serious anyway. But you get what I'm saying. Why don't we just you know run it brush just to see? It is a very small racetrack, so the top speed advantage of the brushless systems, the running 13.5 turn, isn't massive. You know, the little infield sections I won't be left behind as long as the car set up well. It is on a nickel metal hydride, but I can always put it on a lipo as long as I run a volt uh, meter, volt meter. For the lipo batteries, that's fine. I have one of them, a buzzer. And I have one of them, not a voltmeter, a buzzer. I've got one of those. That's fine. Um, but it's not ideal running brushed, and I have to change the entire setup, including the shock oil and everything. But that's okay. I can do that. No problem. Interesting. I'd be interested to hear the RPM difference between a very expensive uh, nickel metal hydride. This is a Reedy Wolf pack. It's about the best nickel metal hydride you can get, and one of the, and that cheap core uh, two cell lipo I've got for the Tamiya. Why don't we find out? Got the old, uh, the high tech, 40 megahertz radio system. Um, uh, I'll be using this on this car just because uh, I don't want to change anything out on it. Um, I'm so, I, I like how this car is. I don't want to mess around with it. And I'm so used to the, the feeling and weight and everything of this controller now anyway. So, nickel metal hydride. What does it sound like? Here we go. That's a 27 turn brushed stock motor, the Revenge of the Monster Pro. It's called the Revenge of the Monster Pro, the four magnet version, which was the last version of it. Re very, very good motor, but not as good as, as my twin magnet one, which is not supposed to be as good as the quad magnet one. I had a very, very good, it is down here, it's been retired now. This is my uh, twin magnet one, which is now gone. The the, the commutator on it has, uh, or the armature on it has no more surface left. It's, it's been um, lathed for the last time. So that's it being retired. But this is, because we hand picked it. I had all the, the RPM printouts in each motor. You can pick which ones were faster than the other. Because they all naturally varied a little bit. This was the best one. And I've yet to find one better than this, including quad magnet ones. So, that was the um, Nickel metal hydride, let's try the lipo. And don't worry, I'll overlay them because I know you've forgotten already what it sounded like. <laughs> definitely quicker. <laughs> Not massively, but definitely quicker. So I'll be using the lipo if I go to this club to try it out. The other option. Get in there. Get in there. The other option. 
is a car that some of you might be familiar with. It's the Yokomo MR4 TC Custom, an even older car than this one, which I spent a good while, I think last year, late last year, or early this year, but I'm sure it was last year, um, I did it, I gave it an overhaul. It's all nice and shiny and new looking, it's got new bits on it, it all the broken bits have been repaired, all the new electronics throughout, um, and it sounds sweet as a nut, it's using a sensor 17.5 turn brush system. This would be absolutely perfect to run it at the club for a sort of practice day. However, you may remember if you did follow that build uh, video series, I did. This used to be my girlfriend's car when it was in her possession. Uh, she lost the battery bar for it and I couldn't hold the battery in. Luckily, what I did just this morning uh, is drop a peg. No, it's um take a mad rat this is a mad rat uh, battery bar i had a spare one and i introduced it to my friend the dremel there you are so i've taken some material down here drilled through that and removed the the arms there you can see made it narrow as well foamy blocks in the back of it and now it fits like a glove look at that that could almost be factory standard sits in there nice and looks the part so that's that sorted. But what I didn't mention during the build thread is the back belt looked a bit suspect when I was rebuilding this car. Um, it, it was, isn't in great nick and I've tested it on the floor and if you accelerate hard with this car right now the back belt is skipping. And I thought that was it. I thought oh I'm never going to be able to run it uh, in any sort of aggressive uh, style. I may be able to, to you know, progressively build up speed to drive it around the street or whatever but that's not very exciting. It's certainly no good for racing. Um, but I did find a company, I think it's a Korean guy, but he gets materials from Japan. Um, I'll put the name of it, if I've forgotten the name of it, it's Tough something or other, Tough something. Um, I'll, yeah, I'll put a link. Um, but he builds and specialises in building and supplying belts for RC cars that have been discontinued. And that's a brilliant, brilliant thing. And it's not just this, there's all different manufacturers, all different models. I can get stuff for this. Uh, you can get stuff for the old street weapon, you can get stuff for, for all, going all the way back. And it's brilliant because some of you might have retro or vintage RC cars that you love, like I do, and you're reluctant to use it, not only because spares are hard to get, and you know, if you crash into a wall or something, you might damage a bumper or you might damage suspension arms. But that's if you crash. Whereas if you have belt drive, the belts will go. There's, there's no if, or, if about it, it's just a when, because the belts will fail. But this guy makes these strong belts out of Kevlar and you, if, if he supports your model, perfect. So I've ordered a back one for this. Once that arrives, awesome. And I will test this car out at this club because I wanted to, I know some of you um, who watched it and supported me during the, the, the rebuild videos on this uh, were keen to see it go and I never got around to it. And it's such a lovely looking machine now. It's in such good condition. I would love to run it indoor on carpet, so that's what we'll do. Once this belt comes in, one day I'll go down to the club and I'll run this. But that's not the last problem, no. The last problem is this. I went on the club website the other day. They don't race touring cars anymore. <laughs> <sighs> no, they, they don't. So. All these <laughs> right, what they've said to me is calm down anyway. Some of the guys do still run touring cars, there's a few a handful of them who, 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 who you know will race them around, but they're, they're not supported anymore. There's no official championship for the touring cars anymore, there's not a big enough grid anymore. Nobody uses the um, the what they call the transponders to do time laps or anything anymore. It's not supported, which sucks because. You know, I love racing touring cars, absolutely adore racing touring cars, and I have all this equipment here, which is, you know, even though, you know, I got that new years and years and years and years ago, but, you know, even this GRXS, which I got second hand, it's still not cheap. There's a lot of money invested here, and a lot of time, and a lot of love, and they're not supported. And as far as I can find, none of the top clubs in Scotland support touring cars racing indoors. They've got Stonehaven up north, which is a long way away, um, who race outdoors, but the, the, the chassis underneath this, is perfect. The chassis underneath the, the GRXS is perfect. I don't want to race them outside. 
So um, I will go down and we will get some uh, some laps in and you will be able to see them go. But as far as this video series, Racer Diaries, it may come to fruition, it may not. We'll see. I mean, if, if they, they run smaller, cheaper, you know, 112, etc., super stock, that sort of stuff. I might join in that because I do, I really have the urge to go racing again. And I really want to race touring cars. But if I can't race touring cars officially, I can maybe race touring cars for fun and then race something else officially. At least that scratches both itches. Um, but yeah, so as far as this, this uh, video series goes, this race for diaries, I will, I, I am planning on doing this. And, um, but it won't be recording during the racing. I mean, I, I'll record, you know, the touring cars running because it's not actually racing, racing. It's not, you know, it's unfair to other competitors and it's very distracting when someone's recording and they're trying to race. So I won't do that. That's not what this is about. Racer Diaries will be like uh, talking in between, in between races. How did that race go? What setup changes are you doing? It's keeping you up to date as things progress. Because I think that's quite interesting. I find it interesting. So you, what changes are you making to your car now? What adjustments and why? How did the car go? That's the sort of thing I'll be doing uh, or planning to be doing. Um, what I will do, my only option right now is the belt isn't here. The bearings aren't here. The only option is to run this brushed with the lipo, convert it to a, a carpet setup from the wood setup, and that's what I'll do. But I won't do that today because um, my best friend's coming around for a barbecue and I'm going to run out of time and it'll take me hours to, to fully convert this. What I am going to do though is upload this video tomorrow. It's, it's Thursday as I record now and I'll upload it Friday. So tagged on to this video so it won't make any difference to you guys whatsoever. That's when I'll uh, do some setup stuff. So it'll all be on the back end of this video. Ha! The magic of video. Cool. Hello folks, it's the next day because I'm wearing a different t-shirt. So, the Lossy Triple XS, I've decided not to change the setup towards carpet. The reason being is the kit springs on the Lossy. You can see here I've got yellow at the front and sort of browny orange colour at the back. For this car, that's the softest and second softest springs that you can get for it. The next one up silver and then purple and then black. The kit springs are purple and, and silver. I always run purple at the front, which is, as I said, second, second hardest, and then silver, which is in the middle. That's a very, it's the stock setup, and it's a very, very good place to start from. And it's what I used on carpet anyway. It was good on carpet. So I was going to use the purple and silvers, but Matthew has my purple and silver springs, and he's doing lots of homers at the moment, so I can't get hold of them until after this coming race meeting. I say race, as I explained, they're not racing touring cars, but you can, you know, show up and run them anyway. Um, so I would rather not lose this wood setup on this car because by the time next week comes round, the belt could show up, could have showed up for the Yokomo, the, um, the bearings could show, have shown up for the GRXS. So yeah, I don't want to lose this setup at the moment. We'll see how it comes, if it comes to this time next week, and then I'll change this anyway because by that point I'll get the springs off of Matthew again. I haven't been idle though. I spent most of this morning and into the afternoon doing this body shell. It's obviously not done yet. There's no lights and stickers on it. This is the Parma Type M, 190mm width, which is, is what I'm going to be using on the JRX S Type R. I have all the stickers here, apart from the ones I'm going to get on the bonnet and on the back that say Type R, which I don't have. I'll get Alan at T-Models to make them. The motor, the Speed Passion motor has arrived. This again is for the GRX-S. If I can open the damn box. Oh yeah, first time. Let's see what it is. It's a lovely, it quite matches the, <laughs> matches the shell quite well. A little bit darker, but there they are. There's the Speed Passion Triple M 13.5R which is apparently a very good motor because the, the predecessor to this one, the cha well, well, well the maybe not the predecessor in terms of the 13.5, but one of the variants of the predecessor to this motor was world champion. So, you know, it can only be good. It can only be better than what I need anyway. And the other motor that's arrived. Now, um, I said that the TL01, I'm pointing over there because that's where it is. Um, I, w I got the torque tuned motor ordered, but what I meant was the GT tuned because I'm 
I'm good at this. Yeah, so it's the GT tuned motor that's going in the TL01 that arrived today. So the only thing left that's arriving for the TL01 is the adjustable links, and the only thing left that's arriving for the GRXS is the bearing kit. Um, and then obviously they have the rear belt for the new Como coming. So one of those cars, or maybe two of them, will be ran next time there's a race meet. Okay? Good. Right. That's all it is for today. Take care, and I'll catch you soon. Cheers.